the ring. Joining us from Miami, Florida, our author, prophet, and senior pastor of Family Christian Center in Munster, Indiana, Pastor Steve Muncy. Radio talk show host, author, physician, and America's health coach, Dr. Asa Andrew. World famous fitness expert and trainer, Don Romero. Minister to music, pianist, and recording artist, Neville Peter. Ready to take your calls, prayer partners around America. you just take a 30 second break and begin to bless the Lord you see whatever you're going through whatever you're facing whatever direction or decision you need to make you need the presence of God and God says if you'll praise me I'll show up well, for the very first time ever to TBN, I am so privileged to bring not only a great friend, but he is my personal coach and trainer. And I met him when I was doing a Bible study for the Yankees. He is the personal trainer who has transformed into one of the world's greatest athletes today, Alex Rodriguez, Mr. Baseball himself. Not only him, but Lenny Kravitz, Denzel Washington, that guy that got real buff for training day. Well, this is the man behind it. Not only that, Steve Tyler. Tyler, I can keep going on. He produces champions. He's known as a man that not only is able to take the physical body and transform it, but there is a reason. His name is Dodd Romero, and behind all the glory, there is a powerful story. His gym and his fitness business and company is known as Bod for Dodd. Or, and so he not only is known as one of the fittest men in the world who produces champions, but I call him Dodd for God because there is a reason that he is able to take a person to the place that he can. Will you welcome one of the world's most fit men who produces champions in every area of life for the first time to TBN, Dodd Romero. Dodd. Good to Thanks have you. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Now, I am so excited because I know what we're getting ready to share. But just as a tidbit of information to set it up, uh, you've trained Alex for how long? Uh, going on almost six years now. And really have created, and, and we know that he's gifted, but you've taken that gift and you've really helped make him just the master of baseball. Well, he's become, um, he's already been incredibly disciplined when we started, but he's learned that if you put Christ first, Christ, family, the hitting a baseball is pretty easy after that. There you go. And and not only that, but like Denzel, you you got him. Um, Denzel had an injury from high school or something, and he came, and, and he had to get ready for a movie, and you went and just got him tip-top shape. I mean, y'all be thinking Denzel uh, another... looking pretty good there, see? I mean, for it was training day or, or one of his movies that you got him in shape for. Denzel, he was... Uh... An easy project, because he's a man of honor also. He gave me my first Bible and told me how important that was to nourish my soul with, with the good word. And we started off every day with the good word. And uh, he was one of my mentors. And he has so much honor and discipline to the Lord that to get him to work... Uh, I had to slow him down, basically. So he was an easy project. Now, you're getting ahead of it because you're already telling really what the key to your success is. You're saying, with the Lord, with the Lord. Because we know, and this is kind of our code language, I say, is that a God connection? And you always look for those, because many come to you, and so many people have tried to hire you, try to buy you, try to get you to work for them, and you're like, no, you only go where God connects you. But tell the story of how that happened, because it wasn't always that way. You were a young man, your father, who is the world's fittest man for his age, correct? Correct. He's uh, 81 years old and um, going strong. I've been training him since 
he was 60 and he's in better shape now at 60 than he than he was you know at 80 than he was at 60. And he was one of the first Hispanics to play in the NFL. Yes. And then y'all moved to Miami. And yeah, this is basically where my testimony starts. Uh, my father was the first Hispanic to ever play in the NFL and did very good at that from Wichita, Kansas, um, back in the 50s. Uh, being Mexican in Wichita, Kansas, um, and playing in the NFL was a great thing. They named Romero Street after us and this and that. But after uh, NFL, he became, instead of the professional football player, he begat, became the Mexican again. Mm -hmm. And teaching job was hard, coaching job was hard, and uh, they hadn't evolved yet back, back in that day. And he didn't want me and, and the rest of the family to go through that. So this is the funny part. He, he bought the house through the mail. He yeah. bought a house in Miami through the mail. Through the mail. And, <laughs> and so here comes the Romeros. Yeah, here, here comes the Romeros. Uh, my sister, the dog, the rider truck, my mom in the car. And school's out and we're off to Miami. Straight to Perrine, Florida. And I, I had never seen a brother at this point from Wichita, Kansas. And... All I'm seeing is brothers all up and down the street. and uh, <laughs> So you landed up in Miami kind of in the hood, and you learned some tough ways to lie. Straight up in the hood. Okay. Straight up. And so when hood. you were training, it wasn't God's on your side, et cetera. You were, you were pretty street tough. That's putting it nice and mild, isn't it? You had no option but to get, <laughs> get right or get out. You know, yeah. And I asked my father, I said, uh, who are all these people? He said, these are black people, and um, this is where we're, we're moving. And um, I saw my mom crying in the car, and my father said, I'll have you out of here in one year. I'll have you out of here in one year. I, I didn't know, bought it through the mail, and it was, a big, <laughs> it, it, it was the biggest blessing to ever come into my life. Uh, we stayed there 30 years, and we couldn't get, yeah. And God was, God had another plan. But until God really got to transition you, because people are going to say, I know the secret to success, that God gives you really the formula and the God connections to, to turn, I say, everyone he gets a hold of, he turns into a champion, or you pull out the God champion in them. But here you are, this street tough kid. I mean, you would just fight in a, a New York second. You would just, it was God's way, no way. Mean, nobody'd want to meet you on the back side of a street anytime or on the front side. They just, <laughs> it was going that way until you get married. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. This beautiful woman who's here today, Sabina. But your marriage was, I mean, y'all, well, in your own words, y'all say you were really hating each other. That you guys were not having the greatest marriage or anything else. And you both had this daughter together. Pick up there and tell the story. Okay. We, we had the baby girl. And I'm going to rewind back, back to the hood real quick. <laughs> when, when, I was, when I was a little boy. The important part of the testimony. My father came to me and he said, son, you are, you are blessed with strength and courage. Use that in a humble, good way for God and you can conquer any mountain you climb. You're good. Use it in a cocky, arrogant way all about me and you'll be humbled and brought to your knees. Mm. And I was humbled and brought to my knees. We had, we had my baby girl. And at three years of age, she uh, was diagnosed with a rare disorder, OTC, where her body cannot assimilate protein. And all we could feed her was basically uh, french fries, McDonald's, and candy. And I, I knew that that was the first sign that something was up, that all I can feed my baby girl is everything I tell everyone not to feed. So I'm walking through the hospital to... to meet with a nutritionist to make sure that everything I'm feeding her is right. And as I'm walking through the hospital, this old man walks by and grabs a hold of me and said, steroids? And I said, no, nah, brother. I said, a lot of hard work, discipline, and my whole tribe's strong. Just, this, that's me. He said, okay, you're the man I need to talk to. He said, 
I have this hand that's atrophied and I can't use it anymore for surgery. I said, well, back then I thought that was a coincidence. I said, I had the same, same exact injury. I said, L1, S5, uh, there's no blood supply in the nerve there. I can rehab you and get you right. Come to my little gym Monday morning and we'll start. Monday morning, look out there, five in the morning, he's out there. And long story short, I worked with this man for a year and a half, and we, we got healed. The Lord, Lord put his power into us, and he, he got back working on children. My daughter now is um, supposedly going to do real fine and, and good. Just They said that she's probably going to have uh, high ammonia levels throughout, throughout her life because she can't simulate protein. And... This was the first test that I got. They said that she'll probably be like a, like a Down syndrome or a vegetable. And instead of cussing the Lord and saying, why are you bringing this to me? I looked at it in a positive way and I said to my wife, I said, I think this is a blessing. I said, we never have to send her away. I get, I get my baby girl the rest of my life. She's at home. I get to take care of her. The doctor says she won't be feeling any discomfort and I think that by passing that first test and handling it, it that I went to the next level mm. but now Don at this time you aren't really saved I mean you're no. like you know God uh, from some of the environment where you grow up and you know what your dad said to you but you're not really walking it out you're living on that other side and so now you say, but you have the right attitude and say, okay, this is good. So then step number two or phase number two, what begins to happen? What, what begins to happen there is uh, I had a very successful business in, in the hood. And the hood's not a good place to bring in a lot of prosperity. So what I did, moved to Coral Gables, Florida, a whole different uh, style of people and I stopped speaking of uh, religion or spirituality and I started backsliding because of that and I think that's why all this took place I, I wasn't the, the man I was supposed to be and on Thanksgiving my daughter goes into complete liver failure so let, let's set this up. When you left your business, because you've told me all the details, you go over and now you open your new gym. You took all the crosses off because you'd always wear a cross. You took everything that said God, Jesus, everything, because you wanted to be politically correct. You wanted to make everybody happy. So you, you left God out of the equation. And on Thanksgiving, you're having Thanksgiving dinner and your family's sitting around the table. And what happens? My father says, uh, son, would you like to give grace? And I said... Daddy, I'm, I haven't been walking the walk, and I'm not a hypocrite. It's, you give grace. And he gave grace and gave me that look like I'll be speaking to you later on. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm afraid of two men, the big man and my father. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and sure enough, my daughter goes into complete liver failure and is in the hospital for a year and a half. And it, I'll fast forward, it got to the point where I'm in the hospital a year and a half later and they said that she's completely brain damaged and that's irreversible. And 